I want to talk about boat safety gear. As you can see, there's quite a lot of safety gear um, on the vessel. If you ever look at your RWA book, you can go through this. And we'll go through all these items um, in this tutorial and other tutorials individually. So before you, uh, before you start your engine, you want to do your engine checks, which will be checking that the seawater is on, the fuel is switched on, the power is on. You've checked the, uh, the header tank for, um, for the cooling water and the belts are tight. All this, um, if you want to know more in detail, we've got the RWA diesel course, um, which is a whole day going over engines, starting engines, and we run that um, in a workshop and with real boats in Canary Wharf. So just have a look at our diesel course and come and join us one of our diesel courses. Um, communications on board. Um, GMDSS. That's just a long word that means uh, Global Maritime Distress and Safety Systems. What it means is all the electronics available to us in case something goes wrong. And we'll go through each independent part of this um, during this tutorial. So the areas are classified into the um, close in, the orange, 30, 40 miles offshore, which is where we can get help with a VHF radio. Um, the A2, we get help in a shortwave radio. A3, um, extended area with satellites. Um, and A4 is between 70 degrees north and 70 degrees south, which is outside the Inmarsat satellite system. Um, GS GMDSS is Integrated Global Safety System, and it includes the uh, VHF, Digital Selective Calling, DSC Radio, Navtex, EPIRB, and SAR, and we'll go through those. So DSC Radio, um, to use a radio, you need to have a um, certificate to operate. We can either do that as a online course or a day classroom course with an assessment at the end. And after that, you'll be issued a um, GMDSS DSC radio certificate to operate, which is valid worldwide. OK, so this will have a distress alerting facility. Um, you can also get the same with a handheld. Some handhelds have the digital selective calling, some don't. Um, the digital selective calling ones will have the GPS built in. Search and rescue radar transponder. So the search and rescue radar transponder, when it detects the beam of a radar, it sends a pulse and on the person's radar screen, they'll see a beam of 12 individual dots. As you get closer, those dots get bigger and bigger. You don't often see this on leisure, sailing and motorboat craft. But increasingly we are using radar so if we have a radar and we see those dots it means somebody set off their search and rescue radar transponder and we must respond to that um, distress transmission navtex um, this sends out marine safety information navigational and weather warnings by text um, the modern ones now on the right have the screen you can deselect and select what you wish but it will give you a weather forecast warnings um, and general information. The great thing for sailors is that this will go about 500 miles offshore because it's working on long wave. And once you've bought the set, which isn't that expensive, um, the information is free to receive. So that's Navtex. EPIRB, emergency position indicating indication radio beacon. Um, it's a distress alerting system. When you switch it on, you push, push the switch, switch it on, it broadcasts a distress message um, by GPS position and also on 406 megahertz up to either the um, the Russian COPAS SAR sat satellite or the Inmar SAR satellite. It receives that information and it downloads it to the nearest rescue center. That rescue center then sends it to the Coast Guard that's nearest to you. They coordinate the search. They either send out a message via satellite or they coordinate a, um, a search with helicopters or lifeboats, whatever they deem to deem to be fit. But it's an amazing system. Um, quickly identifies your position. You have to register it. You register the serial number and all the details of the boat and your details. Um, and it's a very quick system of letting people know that you're in distress. A handheld version of that uh, with a smaller battery and a smaller battery life is called a PLB, Personal Location Beacon and that activates via the satellite in the same way as the EPIRB does. And you can get them small enough to fit inside your life jackets. Flares. 
Um, on your boat, you'll carry flares, and in the life raft, there will be uh, flares, different kinds of flares, red, um, handheld, orange smoke, and red parachute, and we'll go through these. So the red handheld flares, we hold them. They burn three to seven. We've seen three to seven miles, uh, depending on your height, and we've seen about three miles from the horizon. Orange used during the day, and we've seen up to three miles, and it's to pinpoint your position during the day for rescue. Red parachute flares up to 20 miles offshore. So there's a handheld red. Um, it burns very hot. Um, don't look at it because it will damage your eyes and keep it away from you. If you have gloves, wear gloves. And when you're finished, put it in the water because if you're in a life raft, it will just burn through the side of the life raft. And there's a red handheld flares. Depending on the make of the flares, how to set it off. On the left hand one, you twist and push hard. On the right hand one, you undo the screw and you pull the toggle. Handheld orange smokes. There's a picture of handheld orange smokes to pinpoint your position. Red parachute flares. Um, there's a picture that goes up above you and um, it burns. And you can see on the right a little um, parachute there and it falls down on the parachute. So to do the parachute flares, depending on the system, you pull a toggle. These ones you unscrew, take the caps off, uh, take the pin out and you push the lever up. So when you fire them, um, fly them either vertically or slightly downwind, about 15 degrees downwind. If it's windy, you can go up to about 45 degrees downwind. The wind pushes the uh, burning rooster tail of your flare and it makes it come back upwind. And then when it sets, it, it, um, the flare is above you. So in an inshore flare pack, you'll get two handheld reds, two handheld orange smoke floats. And the coastal flare pack, two handheld red flakes, two, ha two orange handheld, and two red parachute flares. In an offshore pack, four red handheld flares, two orange point smoke flares, four red parachute flares, and four white handheld flares. White signal flare. It's not a distress flare. It's for sig signaling your position at night or in fog. So if you think you're at risk of being run down by ship, you can put that up during the night, and they will see you, hopefully. So flare safety. Keep the flares in a waterproof mark box. Don't use out-of-date flares. Hold handheld flares with strong gloves. Hold handheld flares at arm's length and hold handheld flares over the side of the boat. Don't let inexperienced crew use flares. So life raft comes in lots of sh shapes and sizes. See the bottom ones are from ships because there's loads more people. Um, and it depends on the type of life raft you have. So basic life raft, it'll either come in a bag or a fiberglass, um, fiberglass box when you inflate it. It looks like the life raft um, in the picture above. It will have a canopy, a light, an interior lines, boarding ladder. Um, it will have drogal ballast compartments on the bottom to give it stability and exterior lifelines. So to launch a life raft, you launch the, um, normally launch it to leeward, which is the side the wind's blowing away from, and make sure it's tied on. So launch the life raft. Um, if the boat's on fire or there's damage to leeward, you have to launch it to windward. So put it in the water, hold on to it tight, tug the painter out and inflate. Um, from the number of sea survival courses we've done, if the life raft canister is in the water and you can see the writing and it's upright in the water, about a 90% chance that it will inflate upright. Um, if it's upside down, about 90% chance it will inflate upside down. So step inside the life raft. Um, the diagram shows somebody jumping. Please don't jump in the life raft. You could damage it and you're going to need this life raft. So step carefully into your piece of life-saving equipment. And there we go, jumping in. Um, there they don't have much choice, but try and step into the life raft if you can. Um, if the life raft's upside down, it's difficult to write, especially a larger one, and we'll cover that in the sea survival course. Uh, Board the life raft dry. Uh, mainly it keeps you warmer and more stable um, and it's really hard to get the life raft dry once it's wet. So getting into the life raft, some have an inflatable step, makes it easier access. Others have a boarding ladder, which is really difficult because you put your foot on the ladder and it disappears up um, inside. Um, with the help crew, you can get people who can go forwards or backwards or slide in feet first. This is all something that we'll look at and have a go at on the sea survival course. And there we are, the sea survival course coming in backwards. So once you're in the life raft, cut the painter, paddle away from the boat, stream the drogue, which is like the sea parachute in the water, and away you go. 
because the drogue provides life raft stability and slows the drift rate, rate down. So adjust the anchor from the crest of a wave to the trough of the next one. Take seasick nips tablets. Um, so the life raft's cramped, cold, very uncomfortable. It moves in a odd direction that you're um, used to. Um, and it smells a bit like a car inner tube or bicycle repair glue. So that's all going to make you feel sick. So even if you don't usually take seasickness tablets, take them. Because if you are sick, um, you'll dehydrate quickly. And everybody else will be sick because of the smell. Keep the door closed, but ventilate every hour. But make sure you have a look out. Keep it as warm and dry as possible. So on board the life raft, brace yourself against the side of the raft. Um, there's lines on the inside, especially if it's windy. So you don't topple around on the inside of the raft. So inside the life raft... Um, there's contents, there'll be flares, there'll be a spare drogue, sponges, water, a pump, um, a safe knife, um, leak kits, torch and a throw line, as well as paddles. You'll make up your own grab bag. So you have a grab bag in the boat that you'll take with you in an emergency. So you decide what's in the, bag gra the grab bag and we'll cover that in the sea survival course. Person overboard. So try and stay on board. Prevention is better than cure. Ensure all actions and safe precautions will be taken to prevent somebody falling overboard. So make sure you clip onto your harness line and you take one hand for yourself and one hand for the boat. So practice. Practice drills by day and by night and in all weather and sea conditions. Use a bucket and fender. Always wear a life jacket, um, an integral harness that's correctly clipped on while going on deck at night or in bad weather. <clears throat> Go to the toilet. Um, do it down below or in a bucket down below. Um, because if you lean over the side to go to the toilet, uh, there's a higher chance of falling over the side. Uh, make sure you're holding on to secure fixings of the yacht at all times. One hand for you, one for the boat. So safety equipment for overboard. Um, you can get um, tags that if somebody fall if you fall over the side, it will alarm and it will give you an angle and distance um, to the person in the water. So the equipment to get them in, the safety equipment on the left is a life belt. So as soon as you shout man overboard, throw that in. There's a dam boy, um, which looks like a golf flag, which helps you pinpoint uh, where you've thrown that in, which is near the person that's fallen in. Um, a life sling, which you could go in a circle and pick them up or throw the side, and they can put it on and pick you up. And a john boy, which is like a seat to sit in. Uh, when you get close, you can put it on a halyard and pull them on board. So normal man overboard equipment would be the dam boy flag um, and the horseshoe with a light on it. So you get the life belt horseshoe with a light on it. And there's the dam boy. And there's a drogue on the dam boy to stop the wind whistling it um, away. So if somebody goes overboard, immediately throw the life buoyant attachments overboard, raise the alarm by shouting man overboard so everybody knows. Um, you'd have in your safety brief you'd been told what to do if you're with me and i do a safety brief i ask people to do a controlled tack without touching on touching anything and the boat would just hove to and stop on the wind and then we sort ourselves out to go and get the person back so instruct crew member to watch the person in the water uh, point continuously because pretty soon that person's head will disappear in the waves so you need to point where you last saw the person Alert the emergency services, let them know what's happened. Use your radio, your VHF radio. Press the red button once, press it again, hold it in for at least 10 seconds, let go, read the Mayday card next to your um, radio and say it's person overboard. And you require immediate assistance. So note your position. If you have a GPS function um, on your GPS, press that function and it'll give you an angle and distance back to that person overboard. Start your recovery manoeuvre. Um, you may have to lower sails, but that's something you would have prepared and planned for beforehand. So you get to the person. The hard bit after that is to get them back on board again. Um, you can throw a line. Put a life sling on. They can put it over themselves, and you can pull them up on the life sling. Um, when you recover the man overboard, inform the emergency services that you've got the person. They may want to still contact you. They may still want to send the emergency services to take that person to the hospital. Um, they'll make that decision at the time. So different ways of getting people on board. Um, you really need to work out beforehand how you're going to do this and how you're going to get somebody back on board. Um, there's some quite intricate systems, but have a system that works for you. And when 
somebody does fall over the side or if somebody falls over the side have members of the crew that's preparing the recovery system while the rest of the crew are getting back to the person in the water and here's some other systems so the casualty may be suffering from shock and hypothermia uh, be prepared to administer immediate first aid call for help the casualty needs medical attention Safety equipment, radar reflectors, um, if it's foggy, um, especially a yacht, won't be seen that well because um, the yacht will be either made of wood or fiberglass and the radar um, the radar energy will go through that. Your mast is very thin and your engine, which would be a good reflector, could possibly be underwater or in the troughs of the water. So we're not actually that good to be seen in a yacht. So we'll have a radar reflector. So it should be fitted on all vessels of practical large as possible to maximize its effectiveness and it should be as high as possible to maximize its effectiveness so the radar reflector all it is is um, metal usually aluminium at angles to try and maximize um, a bounce back on the radar beams so make your uh, signal bigger to other vessels so hoisted up just underneath the spreaders um, or if you've got an inflatable one you can hoist that up as well all that is is metal on um, metal on plastic, and you inflate it, and it uh, it bounces back the radar energy to the radar. Um, the covered metal one, and on the right, there's one that's been um, opened, and it shows the metal at angles to bounce back on the radar. Uh, try and get it as high as possible. And here's one on a uh, rigid inflatable boat, a rib. Um, electronic radar reflector. These work by um, if it hits if a radar energy hits it it detects that radar energy and it transmits back so these are really effective um, radar reflectors so they are target enhancers AIS automatic identification system so AIS or automatic identification system um, this works on the VHF channels um, for the chosen vessel it will show the distance you are from the boat the MMSI, which is the marine telephone number of the vessel, the vessel's name, the vessel's position in latitude and longitude, if the vessel is underway or it's stopped, the speed over the ground of the vessel and the course over the ground of the vessel. If you've got the equipment, you can click on the vessel and interrogate it and you'll find out how close it will pass to you um, and what time that will happen. So you transmit your AIS um, data via um, the VHF frequencies and you may have a screen like this which will show you the target boats your position and details of the target and here it is you could have it integrated with your chart plotter um, Navionics do that with an app integrate it with your chart plotter um, a lot of this stuff is covered in the um, RAC survival course uh, we offer that um, our swimming pool is a heated swimming pool um, and we, uh, you get to see what it's like to be in a life raft. We can make waves um, and what it's like to have a life jacket. We put the life jackets on properly. Then we put the life jackets on, um, fit them in correctly and see, and you see how it is to wear a life jacket that's fitted in correctly. It's a great course. It's a great day. You'll learn a lot and maybe it could save your life.